Good morning. Good morning, and welcome as we gather for worship on this, the sixth Sunday of Easter, as we continue the Easter celebration, uh, the celebration of the resurrection, God's love for us. Uh, in this time, as we look ahead to this week, Thursday, the ascension of our Lord, uh, Christ knowing that he will be gone physically, uh, that ascending uh, of God's Spirit, that presence that God brings to us, the love that enters into our homes, the peace that God brings to us. Uh, this we gather to celebrate today, and so we welcome each of you as we gather in person, as those continue to join us online as well. Uh, I don't think there are any main announcements today, but just a thought as I've been in the spring as pastors, there's a lot of cemetery services, committals, and just understanding, keeping in prayer those families, uh, loved ones who passed away over the winter, and then come and, and go through this process. And so keeping those people in prayer. Also this year, I find more than others, uh, uh, services for those uh, passed away maybe a year and a half or so ago, uh, where services were not able to be held. And so we keep in prayer. Uh, yesterday I had the service uh, for Barb Geyer, and so we keep her family in our prayers. Uh, last Friday, a week ago Friday, I was down near Grand Rapids for the service for Sandy Gray. And so we also continue to remember her family. And then again, in a little over a week from now, Bob Downen used to be a member here, had moved away to Indiana, and now it returns for the service. And so these people, we keep in our prayers, uh, knowing this journey is often difficult, but that they would know God's love, presence, and the promise of the resurrection. And also, as I talk about prayers, of course, we keep the people of Gaylord in our prayers. Uh, the tornado that went through there, a couple lives lost, uh, but more than that, or in addition to that, I guess, uh, the businesses, the homes, and the destruction. And so we remember the people as they rebuild and for those that go in to seek, to assist as they can. Uh, I believe those are all the announcements. Again, good to have you here as we worship today. And I invite you now to rise as we begin with our opening hymn.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. In the waters of baptism, we have passed over from death to life with Jesus Christ, and we are a new creation. For this saving mystery and for this water, let us bless God, who was, who is, and who is to come. We thank you, God, for your river of life flowing freely from your throne through the earth, through the city, through every living thing. You rescued Noah and his family from the flood. You opened wide the sea for the Israelites. Now in these waters you flood us with mercy, and our sin is drowned forever. You open the gate of righteousness, and we pass safely through. In Jesus Christ, you calm and trouble the waters. You nourish us and enclose us in safety. You call us forth and send us out. In lush and barren places, you are with us. You have become our salvation. Now breathe upon this water and awaken your church once more. Claim us again as your beloved and holy people. Quench our thirst, cleanse our hearts, Wipe away every tear. To you, our beginning and our end, our shepherd and lamb, be honor, glory, praise, and thanksgiving, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Bountiful God, you gather your people into your realm and you promise us food from your tree of life. Nourish us with your word, that empowered by your spirit, we may love one another and the world you have made. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. first reading is taken from the book of Acts, the 16th chapter. During the night, Paul had a vision. There stood a man of Macedonia, pleading with him and saying, come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen the vision, he immediately tried to cross over to Macedonia, being convinced that God had called us to proclaim the good news to all of them. We set sail from Tros and took a straight course to Samarthras. The following day to Nepal, Nep, boy, Nepalus, and from there to Philippi, which is a leading city of the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We remained in this city for some time. On the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate by the river, where we supposed there was a place of prayer, and we sat down and spoke to a woman who had, to the women who had gathered there. A certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God, was listening to us. She was from the city of Thyatira and a dealer in purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. When she and her household were baptized, she urged us, saying, If you have judged me to to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed upon us. Word of God word of life. We will now read Psalm 67 responsively. May God be merciful to us and bless us. May the light of God's face shine upon us. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving help among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God, that all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you judge the peoples with equity, and guide all the nations on earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has brought forth its increase. 
God, our own God, has blessed us. May God give us blessings, and may all the ends of the earth stand in awe. The second reading this morning is taken from the book of Revelations, chapter 21. And in the Spirit, one of the angels carried me away to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God. I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God, the Almighty, and the Lamb. And the city has no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God is its light and its lamp is the Lamb. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of earth will bring their glory into it. Its gates will never be shut by day, and there will be no night there. People will bring into, the, bring into it the glory and honor of the nations, but nothing unclean will enter it, nor anyone who practices abomination or falsehood, but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, brought as crystal flowing from the throne of God and the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city. On either side of, of the river is the tree of life with its 12 kinds of fruit, producing its fruit each month, and the leaves of the trees are, there, are for the healing of the nations. Nothing accursed will be found there any more but the throne of God and the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him, and they will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads, and there will be no more night. They need no lamp, no light of lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. Word of life, word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. As you are able, I invite you to rise. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus answered Judas, not Iscariot, Those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words. And the word that you hear is not mine, but is from the Father who sent me. I have said these things to you while I am still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away, and I am coming to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, because the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it occurs, so that when it does occur, you may believe. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. A fortune teller was looking into his crystal ball, and he looked up and he said to the frog, he said, you're going to meet a beautiful young woman. And the moment she lays her eyes on you, she will have this indelible desire to get to know all about you. She will feel compelled to get close to you. You will fascinate her. Where am I? asked the frog. At a singles club? No, said the fortune teller. Biology class. And we're not going to dwell on that for long. Love. 
Is it genuine? Is it real? Is it lasting? And what does that mean for us? And I'm not just talking about now, today, but also into the future. Our gospel reading today is, is future pointing. Jesus may be thinking about the ascension. We have that in our thought. Jesus no longer, he probably thinking of his death. And yet now today, the ascension, this coming Thursday. But also as Jesus speaks about the Holy Spirit, as we look forward two weeks to Pentecost, as we celebrate the giving of that gift to us. Forward looking. As I thought about this gospel today, two words stood out for me. The first one, the word home. Jesus says, those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Home. Monday night, middle of the night, early Tuesday morning, I woke up and I, I started thinking about this. Now, I don't sleep well, and maybe this is why, but I started thinking about home. I had read the lesson Sunday afternoon, as I often do, to start thinking about it. And I thought about a sermon I preached right before I went back to Papua New Guinea, almost three years ago now, as I talked about the anticipation of going back home, a place where I was born, where I grew up. But then also that thought in my mind that, yes, I then will return to home, now here where I live. And then I woke up Tuesday morning early, probably around 4.15, as Sandy gets ready for work. And I read some news on the internet. I checked my email. I had an email from my mom in honor or memory of my aunt who died a number of years ago. It was her birthday. And so she sent this e-card has this animated scene and, and music in the background, the music there's no place like home. And then my mom's words at the end, talking about our aunt's great love for all of us, how she became a part of all our homes. And I continued to think about it. When I was in Papua New Guinea, had opportunity every night, not so much the first part of the trip where I went to where I had grown up, people knew who I was, but the second part, the church portion of the trip in a different area of Papua New Guinea, each night we'd be at a different church and we introduced ourselves. And so others would introduce, they simply knew me as part of that delegation from the U.S., from America. And when it came to be my turn, I would start off, my name is David Heater, and they'd look at each other right away. And then I remember I would say this, me talk all the same. House for me and me stop long America. That's the last place for me and me long Madan. And what I said is, I want to tell you this. My home, the physical structure, is in America. But my place of birth, my life, began there in Madang, the town in which we lived. It was there that I belonged. Home, belonging, a sense of comfort. But then I thought more about that, and I thought, you know, our lives, our homes, are not always filled with comfort. Lots of things around us. Every day, deluged with information on the war in Ukraine. Thousands and thousands of lives senselessly lost. Businesses, homes destroyed. Millions become refugees. The turmoil. And I don't always want to go there, but the pandemic affected all of our lives. I know on the podcast I was listening to this last week, you know, we always hear people say, I just want things to be normal again. 
And yet on that podcast, he was saying, you know, we will no longer have that normal. We can't go back. But how is it that where we are now, we can move safely forward to create a new normal? The turmoil. Or as people face illnesses or disease, things that very much affect their lives and their life. I think about loneliness. A lot of that came out of the pandemic, the isolation, not that it could be avoided. But I've always said that that isolation has affected us. And even when we are out of this pandemic and moving forward, it's something that I as a pastor, we as a church, will continue to deal with, the effects of that. And yet I also think maybe something positive out of this, if there is something. I think back early on in the pandemic, when we were meeting just virtually, we set up phone call trees, individuals that would take the time to call 10 or 12 different families to keep that connection. We did it out of necessity, but at least for me, it made me stop and think, you know, isolation has always been there, even before the pandemic. It will be there after. People that live alone, people that maybe struggle in a way we will never know. The turmoil. So how do we as a church look for ways to continue to reach out now and also beyond? So what does that mean for our home? Again, Jesus' words, those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Think of a couple other passages in John's Gospel. John 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And you go on a few verses, and the Word became flesh and lived among us. God's presence in our homes, in our lives, in our everyday living. And then John 14, just prior to this gospel reading, a text I read when I was out at the cemetery at St. John's yesterday. Jesus says, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms, many dwellings. Again, that presence in home, here and now, but also into the future. Homes. Yes, still turmoil, but our homes. And that brings me to the second word that stood out, the word peace. Jesus says, verse 27, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. So what does God's peace look like? I describe a painting. Maybe it's one I've described before. A wealthy man hired or commissioned an artist to to paint a picture, a painting that depicted peace. And that artist sat down and he thought about it for a while. And then he went to his canvas and he painted. It was a beautiful country scene, rolling green hills with cattle grazing, birds flying in the deep blue sky. And he took that painting when it was done to the man who had commissioned him, and he knew right away there was disappointment in that man's eyes. He says, this does not depict true peace and sent him back to try again. And the artist went back, and he thought about it a lot more. And finally, he sat down, and he painted. It was, it was a young woman with a, a little child in her arms, the, the woman with that kind smile, that loving smile, looking down at that child. And again, the artist got, took the painting to the one who commissioned him, And he looked at it again, he rejected it. Now for the artist, part of him was angry at the fact that this guy could not see peace in those paintings. There was also frustration. So again, he thought about it, he prayed about it. 
And then he had an idea. He painted it, took it to the man, and the man said, as he looked at it, he said, now here is true peace. So what was that painting? It had these huge waves crashing against a cliff. The artist who captured very well the power of that storm, the, the power in that wind, the dark clouds with the strikes of lightning within it. That water, that foam, that, that beat against those rocks. But then in the very middle of the painting, tucked away in a crevice on that cliff wall, was a bird laying on a nest protected by the rocks that surrounded it. You know, when we think of peace, the world's peace, it's an absence of war, violence, turmoil. And yet what God brings to us is so much more. And that is knowing that even in the midst of that turmoil, and certainly that was on Jesus' mind as he talked to the disciples, knowing that he had been present for three years and, and now was going to be gone. What would be going through their minds? Even in the midst of turmoil and challenges, God is present. There is peace. God, who dwells with us, a part of our home. Love. With God, it is genuine. It is real. It is lasting. So then, what does that mean for us? What does that mean for you?
we confess together our faith in God through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and all of creation. God of new life, open your church to the unexpected ways your spirit is at work. Guide bishops, pastors, deacons, and lay leaders in their visioning, partnership, and planning. Surround us with your peace. God, in your mercy, give a vision of increase and abundant harvest for farmers, laborers, and gardeners who are beginning their growing season. Join their efforts with the goodness of creation to feed all living things. God, in your mercy, shine your light of wisdom and peace among nations. When those in power seek to assert dominance over others, confound their ways and make them yield to your humble authority. God, in your mercy, give safe haven to those who seek healing, liberation, or peace. We pray this morning for health, healing, and peace for Doug, Brenda, Francie, Gordy, Mike, Sherry, Kathy, Ron, Sarah and Lucas, Phil, Eli and Phoebe, Jerry, Caitlin, and for those with cancer and those undergoing cancer treatment, Barb, Andrea, Jerry, Bob, Sherry, Darlene, Pastor Matt, Lynn, Connie, Ben, and whether out loud or in the silence of our hearts, for whom else do we pray? We remember the people of Gaylord, for so many that were affected in so many different ways, businesses, homes, lives. Create places filled with hospitality, where hurting people find your loving presence and wholeness. God, in your mercy, uphold the work of, of ministries and organizations in our communities who assist people experiencing homelessness, citizens returning from prison, and all marginalized people. Accomplish your will through their efforts. God, in your mercy, We remember families who go through times that relive times of pain, those who have lost loved ones, those who take the time to lay them to rest. We remember the families of Sandy Gray, Barb Geyer, and Bob Downen, and all others who have lost loved ones for your comfort, your healing presence, and the joy and hope and promise of the resurrection. God, in your mercy, assemble your people at rivers, streams, and fonts, where we remember our baptism and welcome others into the communion of saints. Gather us with those who have died, 
when we meet together at your river of life. God, in your mercy, in your mercy, O God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. I invite you to be seated. Again, in this time of reflection, uh, giving thanks for continued support in the work of the church through the offerings or mailing in from home. Uh, but we have time to think about God's love that is genuine, that is real, that is lasting, and how we then respond to that very love. Let us pray. Living God, you gather the wolf and the lamb to feed together in your peaceable reign, and you welcome us all at your table. Reach out to us through this meal and show us your wounded and risen body that we may be nourished and believe in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. As you are able, I invite you to rise. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, 
that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ dwells with us here, all who are hungry, all who are thirsty, come. You may be seated. The body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Communion this morning is by intinction. As you come forward, you'll receive a wafer, and then you may dip that wafer into the wine. If you prefer grape juice, uh, that is available. I have the wine. Grape juice is available in the second cup. We begin with the pulpit side.
As you are able, I invite you to rise. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, generous God, for in this bread and cup we have tasted the new heaven and earth where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection that through our lives all may know life in Jesus' name. Amen. God, the author of life, Christ, the living cornerstone, and the life-giving spirit of adoption, bless you now and forever. Amen.
Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace. Tell what God has done.